Ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Miss Anime, and this is Miss Anime Seasonal Podcast, where every week I basically go through all the anime I'm watching this season. Uh, you guys know the drill. I, I've done this before. I've done this many, many times. Um, this is the third episode of the podcast, actually, you know, the, the actual official podcast. So, uh, basically what I do is I take this little bag, and I, uh, I rummage around in it and I uh, take out whichever show I'm watching this season and I basically just pull out the show and I talk about it. So let's get started because we have a lot of shows to get through. I'm going to start with the one that's not in the bag, the one, you know, which I I probably should put in the bag, but uh, Dance Dance Censure is still not in the bag. Um, mostly because I just haven't gotten to putting it in the bag yet. Uh, so basically, I find it interesting how not only is this show tackling the idea of toxic masculinity, um, and the fact that, you know, men get a, like I said, men get a lot of shit for sports. Men get a lot of shit for being in ballet, and oftentimes in ballet, uh, if you're male and you're a ballet student, you're presumed to be gay, which there are a lot of gay ballet dancers but you know there's occasionally one who's not so i'm not necessarily going to say they all are a lot of them are but not not all of them but i think what's equally interesting is that you know is that uh luo is being picked on right and he's he's clearly uh being bullied because i i'm not entirely sure why i think it's probably because uh he he doesn't, I, maybe it's because he doesn't like the fact that his mother is such a, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what the connection between Luo and his, and I presume she's his mom because she, um, is, but, you know, it's clear that for whatever reason he doesn't, he's been taught, you know, not to, not to fight back and he just, he just kind of takes it. But what's especially interesting for me is that it's, it's also clear, (sighs) I, I think that if I think that Junpei is afraid that if he gets involved, he's going to be picked on too, and that that moment of him just declaring that he likes ballet is very very neat because it's not only because it's brave of him, but also you know, you know, it's it's what he wants to do, but at the same time he knows that it's viewed as not manly. He knows that it's viewed as very uh, un uh, as very feminine. Um, I'm interested to know why, you know, why it is the, what, what happened in his past that caused Luno to become so quiet, um, but anyway, other than that, we're, we're just gonna get to the actual, uh, baggie, so let me pull out, um, Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush, um, Basically, the only thing that I like about this show is this one character who, um, who reminds me of a, of a DC character probably most of you have not heard of. Um, if you've ever seen Young Justice Phantoms, you will know who I'm, I'm referring to, but I'm not gonna go into detail because I, I don't think it's intentional, but, you know, I like him. I think he's very interesting. But other than that, there's not really much going for this show. You know, they're still in the setup phase of, you know, going through everybody, going through all of the kids, all of, all of you know, how rush duels work. And I, I really don't care. I want an actual fucking plot. Um, and it looks like at this point we're not really going to get one, which is disappointing because I was hoping after, you know, Sevens was basically extremely boring and nothing happened. And I was like, oh, an alien protagonist, you know, some something different. Like, holy crap, that's that's neat. Uh, that's really cool. But it it's it's not. It's boring as tar. There's not much to talk about yet. But hopefully, you know, hopefully uh, we get to a point where something actually happens in this show. But anyway, pulling out the bag. Uh, uh. I'm quitting heroing. I 
I might give this show one more episode, but I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much done with this show at this point, because it's basically just another reiteration of, uh, it's just another reiteration of the same show we've already seen that, you know, oh, he, he has to get the Demon Lord's army in the shape. But other than that, nothing, nothing has really happened. It's mostly like politics about, you know, oh, the funding and the, which in a show with actual setup might be interesting, but so far nothing, it's, it's, it's basically, you know, nothing's happened and it's really fucking boring. So... I'm, I'm, I'm putting this one back in the bag for now, but chances are probably I'm gonna, I'm gonna ditch it within the next episode because I just, I really don't care. So, coming up next is... Shield Hero 2. It's, it's more with the turtle. Um... And I knew immediately upon seeing this thing, and it has some connection to the the girl played by Hana, Kana Hanazawa. I don't really know what it is. Like, for some reason, they have to kill her to kill it or something. I don't know. I I really don't care. I want to go back to the, the actual plot, you know, because it's, it's not... <sighs> I at least want to go back to Rishi and what she's doing, because that was very interesting. Although, uh, it, it's, it's not nothing past that. It's basically, you know, basically just more with the turtle. So, there's not a lot to go through yet. Um, next, next one. Next one. Okay. Uh, summertime rendering pissed me off really pissed me off because they basically spoiled the entire fucking plot in like five minutes and it's annoying because I was hoping that this would be a big mystery I I, I really don't understand why you're putting all your cards on the table like it's still an okay show I like the idea that you know they have to they're still trying to solve her murder but why would you spoil the shit with the shadows now like, we're only three episodes in. You can't really go very much from there. We know that, you know, I do like the looping idea. I do like the idea that he has to keep coming back and he keeps restarting the trip. That's interesting. But I'm just, I can't enjoy this show as much now because they just basically spoiled the whole thing in 10 minutes. And it's, it, it's frustrating. It's really, 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 really frustrating because I can't, I can't hate it. I just, I can't, I'm going to keep watching it because I want to know where it goes. But anyway, I'm dipping my hand back in the bag because I don't, I don't really much more to say because it's basically the same information we already got. Um, so next, next part, next one, uh, my heart's got Remiki. um, not very much new. There's still, uh, he's still trying. I like that the girl doesn't understand. I like that Hort doesn't understand. You know why they they don't have a problem with her. Um, basically, basically they don't. Basically, um, she's like, but I I betrayed you guys. I I I turned on you. And they're like, dude, you got, and I'm like, dude, you got your horn filed off. You're fucking tortured as a little kid. Oh my God. Like, like literally they show her, if you don't remember, they show her in the previous episode actually having her horn filed off and it was just, it was clearly painful. So I don't really blame her for complying with them because imagine what else they could do to her. Oh my God. It's awful. It's really, really just sad. Um... I like that I'm glad that they have less of Lou, but they just, they, they need to get rid of her entirely because I'm still, you know, I'm still skipping half the show because I can't stand her and I'm pretty sure that means I'm missing stuff because, uh, um, I, I, w I want to enjoy it, but I will enjoy it a lot more when they, they ditch her and they don't do anything else with her. 
Um, next part. Next, next one. Next one. Uh, Tiger and Bunny. I finally got to watch the first episode of Tiger and Bunny. It was basically just going over the heroes. I don't hate it. Um, it was basically just a recap episode. It was basically just them, you know, oh, here are the heroes. It does introduce a new buddy system, which I, I, I don't trust. I think there's, um, I don't entirely get what they're going for with this. Like, they're pairing them off, maybe to make it more efficient, maybe to, you know, match, maybe since some of them are pairs already, they think that it, it's a good it i don't know but that's that's pretty much the only new thing right now um other um other than that we just meet the heroes again and we meet uh the villains who were extremely creepy and i i, I really like you know the the two we met at the beginning they're extremely creepy but other than that nothing new um, not to say it's bad, it's Tiger and Bunny, it's very not bad, but, uh, next one, um, is Black Rock Shooter is extremely disappointing, and I'll tell you why it's disappointing, because 90% of it was, was, uh, it, it was clear that whoever animated this did not know what they were doing, because 90 is, like, if you've ever, if you saw the the alien fights from, oh god, what was it? The last one I watched, uh, 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 the the mech one, the one with Megaton Mu Kumusashi. If you saw the fights from that show, basically these are the same. This is the same kind of animation with a lot of gunfire and a lot of close-ups. I like her design. I like their designs, but I don't really mem remember anything else from it because most mostly what I remember, I remember her being some kind of clone and I remember her, you know, they're trying to find their way out of this facility. That was interesting. But other than that, it was mostly just a, a, a prolongated fight scene and it just, it was extremely boring. I might give it another episode to see if it works, but... I don't think I'm going to watch past that point because it's just, if, if it was not, and the last Black, Black Rock Shooter was beautifully animated, so I don't understand what happened with this one. Uh, next one. Data Live 4. Uh, so, I'm a little bit wary of, you know, the fact that, you know, they have a, they have a, they have a threat, they have an actual threat, you know. But all they really do with it was, oh, you know, now he has to kiss her to make her better. Well, if that's all he has to do, then why go through all this shit? Like, why go through, you know, I, and plus she's unconscious, which is really, really, really creepy. Um, yeah, it's, it's really fucked up that he had to kiss her while she was unconscious. Ew, like, ew. Um, I do like the idea that people can cause her, cause the spirits to become inverted. Like, I like the idea that, you know, they can kind of force inversion on the spirits. You know, that's an interesting concept, and I hope they do something with that. Um, other than that, it's probably just going to be more of him going on dates with girls. It's cute, but it's it's not a lot to work with, because it, that's basically just what it, Data Live is. You know, he, he goes on dates with a bunch of girls. So, uh, that's... That might be it for Data Live. Not because it's bad, but because there's not much to it. And I don't want to go through an entire season going, Oh, I like this girl he went on a date with. So, we'll see. Okay, Heroin Terramono. This one is going out of the bag. Not because it's bad. I absolutely love this show. But the entire premise of this show is basically just watching he or be adorable. She is adorable. But there's really not enough plot here to warrant me actually making a full, full, a full, uh, page out of this. Like, there's, there, there's really not enough to warrant it making its own segment. 
yes, Hiyori is fucking adorable. I love watching her, watching her just be precious as hell. But, um, that's pretty much it. You know, she's their manager and she has to, you know, run around and prevent their hijinks. That's, there's not much to it. Um, I would highly recommend this show. I'm not saying it's bad. I would highly recommend this show. But there's not enough. There. Uh, sorry, I know I'm repeating myself. But there's just. I can't think of anything else I want to say. I do. Um, um, we are going to meet another band. So I might put this back in the bag until I meet them. I don't think there's going to be anything substantial. But we are going to meet another band. So that's going to be kind of interesting. But other than that. Um, please go watch the show. It's super cute, but there's nothing to talk about, so it's going out of the bag. Um, next one. Next. Spy Family. So, one thing I don't understand about this show, first of all, they're, they're setting up, they have their family, they, you know, the first episode was the daughter, second episode was the wife, now they have the house. Um, and they're setting up for this interview, and it's very interesting. One thing I don't get, and maybe somebody could answer this, why aren't Lloyd and you're sharing a bedroom? If I was, if I was someone and I was looking at this family, I would be very suspicious of the fact that, you know, especially in this time period, I know oftentimes husband and wives, you know, maybe they're splitting, maybe something, but no, they're married. They're like actively married. So... Why are they not sharing a bedroom? Maybe, maybe you will bring it up at, up at, up at some point and be like, hey, you know, I think it would be wise for us to share a room. But, especially since I thought it was a rom-com, maybe I'm wrong. Um, but, you know, I, I hope they address that. Other than that, it's basically just more of them setting up, you know. I, I, so, I want to see a picture of her brother. Because I don't know, I think I've seen a picture on one of on a website but I'm not sure why they haven't shown his picture yet in the show um other than that not much to talk about there's enough that I'm of of a plot that I'm gonna keep keep talking about it because there is an actual plot but uh uh that's it for now for spy family and we are at the bottom of the bag how many more left a few left um uh, Gunjo no Fanfare, I am not watching this show anymore. I just, I thought about it for a while, and I realized that I just, the the dialogue is terrible. Half the time they don't, like I said, half the time it feels like whoever was animating them doesn't know how to animate faces, so the, half the time their faces are in shadow, and there's just no plot so far. So... I'm taking that show out of the bag. If something happens, I'm going to watch it in the background. And if something happens, I will, might put it back. But I'm probably not going to put it back in the bag. Um, uh, what's next? Uh, hmm, let me see. Shoka, Shoka Shoujo Virgin Road. So they're still heading to this conference. And they're still talking about uh, not a lot of interest here. They're still heading to this uh uh, what, what is it, they're still heading to this, uh, uh, ceremony, and the, the, the thing of note here is that they established that, uh, Akari turned back time for the entire world. I think what it is, and the characters, I'm surprised they haven't figured this out yet, isn't just that she can turn back time. It's that when she's in a state of peril or people around her, she subconsciously just turns back time. Like, it's not something she can control. Um, and I know uh, they keep saying that, you know, oh, if she does keeps doing this, that it's going to be bad and something bad is going to happen. I have a sneaking suspicion that's complete bullshit. I have a sneaking suspicion that this is that whoever told her that is lying through their teeth. Um, and the part of the reason is I've seen this concept before where the character, you know, is told, oh, this person has a terrible power and, you know, they need to, they need, they need to have, need to be killed or they need to have this power removed. 
And then they get to the bottom line and they're like, wait a minute, you're not bad. You're not a bad person. And then the people come after them and she tur- he turns, uh, she turns on them. It, uh, I'm curious to see how they handle it though. That's the thing. It's, it's predictable, but at the same time, I'm very curious to see what they do with it and how they go about it. Um, so I'm going to keep watching it. I'm not necessarily entirely interested in it, but you know, that's, that's something. And finally, last but not least is build divide code white. So, uh, we've been, it's been hinted that it's been hinted that something is off. Like, they keep talking about another world, and they keep talking about, you know, uh, out how, you know, going into the Alzer world. I think that they are in a computer program. I have a sneaking suspicion that, for whatever reason, somebody built a p- computer program, and all the people who are in it are in-game. Maybe it's a game. Maybe it's, like, a video game, and they're all in-game NPCs. Um, and I also find it very interesting that the idea that, uh, whatever happened reset everything. So now, I don't know who the girl was. I don't remember her. Maybe she was just another opponent, but the, the guy whose name I don't remember now, the, the fact that they don't remember her, either it, either it reset or get well getting a new king resets it i'm i'm so curious to see because i know i know we're gonna have to run into tarot again i'm curious to i'm i'm just genuinely interested to see what they do with that like how they handle that um the the battle was shorter this time which i really really like because the battles are very intrusive and i don't don't necessarily find them interesting but I'm glad they're shorter and I'm glad I'm also glad that you know I, you know like I said Kika's having to learn to stand up for herself Kika's having to learn you know that she can't just run away from her problems and she has to you know deal with them head on uh is there anything else I don't think there's anything else um the the media pit podcast is still gonna come but i need to pick a show in order to do that i have not decided on what show i'm going to do for that podcast so if you like so uh if you like this content you guys guys can guys can check me out on my other youtube channel where i do gaming and i do a, a a western podcast called the on the media sorry i meant the anime i'm sorry i meant the anime pit podcast when i'm talking about the anime pit podcast is still going to come out the media pit podcast is already coming out and basically if you guys like this content you guys i i please come over please come i'm gonna check out my youtube channel where i do, you know um where i do this every week and i also I also do gaming, and I also put my media pit podcasts, um, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep putting one of my podcasts on YouTube because I don't want to clutter my pages, but, but we will see when we come to it, and I will see you, you next week for the next episode of the Anime Pit Podcast, and, sorry, no, not the Anime Pit Podcast, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that hasn't come out yet, Miss Anime Seasonal Podcast, I'm sorry, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm sorry guys. I'm just I'm new at this, so you got to give me some time I'm to figure this out. Also, keep in mind I don't have a co-host, so I don't have anything to bounce off of. So, I will see you guys in the next podcast.